here, but uh, I think on my, this is on my iPad, but on my laptop is page seven. But um, you can look for page, the problem on page eight or seven. It should look like this, everyone. Uh, the, this one, the less practice two tailed Z test. And then here is the problem. You can um, go ahead and find it for me. We're gonna work on this problem. When you find it, read the problem a few times and um, identify what is given and give the notations for those numbers. Uh, give the, all right, it's on page 60, 66, and to last it, it's from your cross pack on page 66. Right, so when you find it, um, read a few times and then identify um, all the items, like what num uh, the, the 100 is what, give it a notation so that you can um, plug it into the formula later. Give all the numbers the notations as well, like 100 is what, so write the notation for it as well. And then I'm gonna call on someone to read the problem out loud. It says blood glucose levels for obese patients have a mean of 100 with a standard deviation of 15. A researcher thinks that a, a diet high in raw cornstarch will have a negative or positive effect on blood glucose levels. A sample of 30 patients who have tried the raw cornstarch diet have a mean glucose level of 140. Test a hypothesis that the raw cornstarch had an effect that's at a significant level of 0 0.05. Well, um, let's do this together first. All right, so um, the mean of 100. What is the notation for this, everyone? So in this case, everyone, if they don't mention, if they don't mention if it's the the sample mean or the population mean, then in this case is the population mean. Okay, it should be the population mean. So the the notation for the population mean. Make sure that you take notes for this. The the notation or the symbol for the population mean should be the mean mu. Okay, yeah, it should be the population mean mu, not the sigma. My bad. The mean new, everyone. And the next one is a standard deviation. The next one is a standard deviation of 15. That means that in this case, it is the population standard deviation. Then yes, in this case, you're gonna use the sigma. Okay. So sigma is equal to 15. Make sure that you write it down. And a researcher thinks that a diet high in raw corn starch as starch will have a negative or positive effect on blood glucose levels, a sample. So when you read the word sample, so that means that in this sentence, it's gonna talk about the information of a sample, okay? So, so in this case, so this is annoying for this. I don't know why I have to set up this. And so in this case, a sample of 30 patients. Um, we have the 30 already, 30 patients. What is the notation for this, everyone? What is the symbol for this, for the sample of 30 patients? Patients is the same as like participants or individuals. So what is the notation for this? It should be and, right, it should be and, okay? Yeah. So the notation for the symbol size is and, all right? Yeah, so, many. so 30 patients who have tried the raw corn starch diet have a mean, have a mean glucose level of 140, 140, all right, so, what is the notation or the symbol for the 140, everyone? Can you guys type in the chat for me? What is the notation for that or the symbol for the mean 
glucose level of 140. In this case, they are talking about the, the sample and it's the mean. So what is that? The population mean is the mu that we talked about here already. But now we're gonna talk about the sample mean. So what is the notation on the sample mean, All right? I got lathe. It should be the X with the bar on top, right? All right, many of you got it right. And even if you don't get it right, that's okay. It's good that you tried, okay? So it should be the X bar, everyone. The X bar is the, the sample mean, All right? So it should be the sample mean. If you don't remember, then write it down, okay? It should be the sample mean. You need to um, test the hypothesis that the raw corn starch had an effect at a significant level of 0 0.05, all right? So for the significant level of 0 0.05, what is the notation for the significant level, everyone? Type in the chat for me. If you cannot say the no type the notation, then... Um, say the word, all right. So the significant level, the notation for it should be the, the alpha, and they want the little alpha like this. If you don't remember, write it down. Yeah, it should be even Sarah got a two molos. Yeah, so you guys cannot um, write it, then you're gonna write letter A, that's fine. Okay. And then the significant level is 0 0.05, okay. Write that down as well. All right, everyone, so you already identified all the items that are given to you. Uh, now, what kind of test are we going to use in this problem? Can you type in the chat for me? The Z test or the, the T test? Type in the chat for me. I can give you a hint. Like, you guys are given the, the sigma right here, the standard deviation. So what kind of test are you guys using right now? All right, Vanessa. All right, so when you guys are given the population standard deviation, this one should be the population one, everyone. Oh my God. Yeah, this one should be the pop population standard deviation, okay? Then if you guys are given the population standard deviation, then you guys should use the, use the Z test, okay? use the z-test when the sigma or the population standard deviation is given, okay? Uh, the the, the t-test is when the sigma is not given, okay? So in this case, the sigma is given, then you use the z-test. All right, next, we're gonna move on to the steps, okay? So always identify all those items to, to see what test you need to use first before you follow all the steps here, then that would be easier then just go straight to the steps, okay? All right, um, everyone start with um, step one for me. What is the no hypothesis and what is the alternative hypothesis? All right, so in this problem, we are testing a hypothesis about the, the mean, okay? About the mean mu. So they already have the mean mu for us here and the HO means the the, the no hypothesis, okay? It means that it's the no hypothesis. So in this case, the mean mu, if you look at the, the problem, then here is the, the number that you need to write in the box, okay? So the mean mu is equal to 100, okay? Make sure that you write in. Uh, if the mean mu, in the no hypothesis is 100, then we also have the same number for the alternative hypothesis, HA. And remember that for the, the no hypothesis, uh, it always contains the equal sign, okay? The no hypothesis always contains the equal sign. And the alternative hypothesis, um, contains either not equal to 
or is greater than or is less than. But I think in this book uh, or in this class, um, they don't ask you guys to do this yet. I, I'm not sure if they're going to ask you to do the is less than or greater than soon. But um, in this chapter, we just use the is not equal to. Okay. And one more time, the for the no hypothesis, it always contains the, the equal sign. Okay. It doesn't have a is not equal to or less than or is greater than. Okay. Yes, so one more time for the is not equal to, is greater than or is less than. This is for the for HA only. Okay, for HA only. All right, so uh, for this class, step two, they're asking you to use the uh, Two tailed test. Okay. They don't you they don't ask you to use the, the one tailed test. So that means that there's less work for you in this class. Because if you have to do uh, more tests, that means that there will be more work. Okay. All right. So the two tailed test, that means that the the alternative hypothesis contains the is not equal to sign. Yeah. All right, let's move on to step three. Select significance level alpha. What is the significance level alpha, everyone? Uh, I already told you, but now I'm asking you guys again. Step three. Step three. What is the significance level alpha? Just write, give me the number only. All right, I'm getting many answers now. Good, yeah, so you should be able to identify it. So it should be zero, should be 0 0.05, okay? That is step three. Now let's move on to step four. Do we do a Z test or a T test? I already asked you this question. What kind of test here, everyone? Answer it again. It should be the Z test, okay? Because, because, um, because sigma is given, okay? Or is known. All right, good. All right. Let's move on to step five. Right, find the critical value, uh, Z crit. Crit means critical value, right? From the the T table, from the T table, from the Z table, not the T. All right. So um, the table for this class, I think they give you only three, three pairs, right? And if you look at the uh, earlier pages, I'm not sure which one. Um, it is in. So you did this one earlier and here is the table and you have to uh, look at the video. Okay, I'm not gonna tell you right now, but if you don't have the, the numbers in the boxes here, in the blanks here, then you should uh, watch the video and find out what the numbers are. Okay, But uh, in this table, they gave you only um, six pairs of the, Z for the critical values. Okay, so you don't have to look at a like a, a table with many numbers like the T table later that we're gonna look at. Okay. All right. C And last time you took notes already, so um, soon you're gonna tell me what um, you have here, okay? So if you look at the table that I just showed you, then if the sigma, if the if the, the alpha is 0 0.05, okay? And if you look at the table, then the Z crit will be 
96 okay from that table that you just looked at okay let's double check it again so it should be 0 0.05 and it should be 1.96 all right so in this table everyone it should be um, 0 0.05 here okay so this one should be 1 minus uh, 0.95 okay so in this case the alpha is 0 0.05 i think this is on page six okay therefore the z crit there are two z crit here okay so one is negative and one is positive 1.960 and you have to use those values All right, so let's look at this. So from the table, we just uh, found it that uh, the critical values, Z crit is 1.96 plus or minus, okay? And now, because we are doing the two-tailed test here, so you have to draw the diagram like this. So that means that you have to draw the two tails. Okay? One is on the left and one is on the right. So uh, you can think of it as you shade the left tail like this and shade the, the right tail like this. Okay. So the shaded regions are the rejection region. Okay. And you can see that the middle section is a fail to reject. Okay. Fail to reject what, everyone? What hypothesis here? Everyone, can you um, type in the chat for me? The no or the alternative hypothesis here. It should be the no, everyone. So if your test statistic falls in the rejection region, then uh, you reject the no. Okay? The no is HO, is the no. Uh, if it falls into the left tail or the right tail, then we reject the no. Okay? HO is the no hypothesis. And if... Um, if the test statistic falls in the middle section, the fail to reject, uh, fail to reject the no as well. Okay? If it falls in the middle section, then we fail to reject the no. You guys are confused. Make sure that you uh, stop me and ask questions. And um, one more thing is that um, make sure that you guys follow the notes of this class because last time when you guys did the exam and um, some of you used the the, what is that? The sample standard deviation formula, and you did not follow the notes of this class, so it was not accurate. Okay, you got it from where somewhere else. So every book is different or a little bit uh, different. So uh, don't just follow the other books. Follow the notes of this class closely. Okay, otherwise you would get the wrong answers. All right. So now. You have to um, fill out the Z crit. Okay, the Z crit that you just found right here. Here is the Z crit, everyone, from the table that we just found. One is negative and one is positive, uh, 1.96. Then the negative one is going to be the negative one is going to be on um, or at the border between the reject region and the failed reject region. So the negative one should be. On the left here, it should be one negative 1.96. Okay. So that would be the Z crit, the one on the left, and the one at the right border between the reject region and the failed reject region should be positive 1.96. So this is the Z crit that you got from the table. Okay. Write that down as well. All right, so now we just have to use the formula to find the test statistic. Z is another Z value, but you have to use the formula and it's called the test statistic to see uh, if it falls in the rejection region or the uh, reject region or fail to reject region. Okay. All right, so that means that it's going to be the next step. 
So we are done with step five. And now we're gonna move on to, oh, one more thing that I need to mention is that, um, so if the alpha, everyone, if the alpha is 0 0.05, then um, here we have two tails, right? Then that means that the each tail should be, um, should have the area of alpha over two, okay? And what is, uh, what is alpha over two, everyone? It should be 0 0.05 divided by two. Or you can say that is 5% divided by two. What is half of 0 0.05, everyone? Can you guys type in the chat for me? Anyone? You can say that half of 5% is 2.5%. Is 2.5% is uh, the same as alpha over two. So what is alpha over two in decimal? Everyone type in the chat. What, right, it should be 0 0.025, right? Or you can use the 2.5% and convert it to the decimal number by moving the decimal point to the left twice. Okay. All right. So that means that uh, the area of each tail here should be alpha over 2. And the area of alpha over 2 should be 0 0.025. Okay. It's half of the alpha and the one on the right too. It should be alpha over 2. And then it is 0 0.025. Step number five, okay? Now step number six, step six. You need to, um, step six, you need to calculate the test st statistic ZOBT. Um, the COBT is a test statistic. I forgot what the OBT stands for. Everyone, can you type in the chat for me? No, that crit is critical, but what is OBT? I totally forgot. But it doesn't matter. You just know that the COBT is a is a test statistic. Um, but it doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. Uh, when you see that, you know that it is a test statistic that you need to find from the formula. Okay. All right. So now, now you need to fill out all the the numbers in the in the box for me. And we already did it earlier in the question. Okay. And now we just have to fill it in. You can see that the sample size, if you look at the problem, the sample size is 30, right? 30 patients, okay? And then the mean mu is 100, is 100. And then the sigma is 15, yeah, sigma is 15. And the X bar is a sample mean. Uh, sample mean is what? Okay, so I want to test you guys. What is this, the last one, everyone? What is the X bar equal to? Type in the chat for me. Just write the number. And it's 30 already. So what is the X bar? The X, X bar is the, is the mean, the sample mean. So what is that? Right, yeah. Okay, good job, everyone. Sarah, Jennifer. It should be 140, right? The X bar over here, everyone. It should be the sample mean, okay? It should be 140. All right, there's a lot of notations that you guys need to review. I know that it's hard to remember all of them at once. So review many times, okay? So now we just have to um, plug these values into the formula. And yeah, so if you look at the table, everyone, uh, let me see. Here, so if you look at the table here, um, so I'm gonna label this. This is number one, the first formula and the second formula. What formula are we gonna use for that problem? Can you guys type in the chat for me? All right, so we should use number one, right? Should use the, the formula for the, the Z test, okay? because you guys are given the sigma, right? In this case, the sigma is given. So you have to use that formula, okay? Go ahead and write down the formula for me and plug in the numbers for me first.
if you have the answer, um, type in the chat for me. So the X bar is 140. The mean mu, the mean mu is 100, right? And then over, the sigma is 15. And then divided by the square root of n, n is 30. Okay, all right. I'm going to wait for your answer. You can subtract the top. You can subtract the top, which is 40, right? And then divided by 15. And then for the for the, the square root of 30, you can move it to the top. You can take the reciprocal of it. So you can move the square root of 30 to the top, okay? Like that. So that means that 40 times square root of 30 and then divided by 15. I got Angela, Brianna. All right, good try everyone, those two. All right, so first you want to take the square root of 30. Everyone take the square root of 30 and then whatever you get multiplied by 40. And then after that, divide that by 15. And I think the answer, if you round it to one decimal place, then it's gonna be uh, about approximately equal to 14.6 or 14.59, it's not wrong. Okay, so most of you got the right answer. And then even if you don't get the right answer, that's fine that you tried, okay? All right, so that's the answer. And remember that this is the, the Z OBT, or it's the test statistic, okay? It's a name for that, it's the test statistic. All right. All right, let's move on to step seven and nine. Seven, two, nine, okay, or seven, eight, nine. State the conclusion. But before you can do that, you have to check to see um, where the test statistic falls in, in the graph here, okay? So if you look at the, the test statistic, um, ZOBT that we just found, ZOBT, which is um, 14.6. Which region does it fall in, everyone? I'm going to name, I'm going to label them by the numbers again. Okay? So one, two, three. What region does the ZOBT uh, fall in? Just tell me the number. You have to you have to compare the, the ZOBT with the Z crits, the two Z crits to see if it's greater than the, the 1.96 or is it less than one negative 1.96 or is it between those two Z crits? So which one is that? All right, so most of you said that is number three, right? So if you look at the 14, you can see that if you look at the 14 here, 14.6 here, and you look at the, it's the positive value. So it should be uh, to the right of the mean, right? It should be to the right of the mean, okay? Because it's positive. If it's to the left of the mean, then, and it is negative, but now it's positive. And you can see that uh, here is uh, the secret and it's 1.96. So that means that 14.6 is way greater than 1.96. So it should be in the, the right tail. So it should be in um, region number three, okay? So, and region number three means that we need to reject the no, HO, okay? You can see that we need to reject the HO, okay? Or, is that right? Yeah. So we need to reject the no, okay? HO, okay, go ahead and write that down. All right, so before you can state the conclusion, make sure that you guys um, understand this first before you can do it. All right, make sure that you guys write this down, okay? So this is the, not related to the problem above. It's just other notes that you want to remember. So H, O, which is a no, right? Means um, there's... No, there's no statistically significant 
you can find this in the notes okay but make sure that you write down all right i got angela's um, answer so the no means there's no statistically significant uh, difference difference between between um between the the mean meal or the population mean the population mean meal and the sample mean x bar okay that's what it means for the the no that means that there's no statistically significant difference between the population mean mu and the sample mean okay and so h a or h1 in this case is is the alternative hypothesis uh means what means there's a statistically significant difference between um, the population mean mu and the sample mean okay so that means that in this case the mean mu is different from the x bar but for the no for the no the mean mu is the same as the, the x bar as the sample mean okay all right so from that conclusion if we reject the no, that means that if we reject the no, that means that we um, we support. That means that we support the alternative hypothesis. Hypothesis, and that means that the mean mu is different from the x bar. Okay. So that means that if you write it um, in words, that means that there is a statistically statistically significant difference, okay, between the mean mu and the x bar in this case. Okay, so that's how you write the conclusion for this. All right, any questions? All right, so that's how.